Easy modes. Should video games have them? This is a debate that uh, happens all the time. Uh, every time a, a hard video game shows up, especially anything by From Software, or anything that's similar in style, we have debates and discussions on whether or not easy mode is a requirement in video games, or whether or not uh, video games that lack them are gatekeeping and elitist. At the moment, the same conversation has jumped to the forefront again because a, a game called Mortal Shell has released, which is apparently very similar to Dark Souls and is carrying on the tradition of being very hard. So, should they have hard mode? Should they have easy mode? Should they have a, a planned difficulty? I'm here to say that it depends on the game. And that's an answer that's not going to satisfy anyone. But, like with most things, this issue is one that you need to treat with, say it with me, nuance. Most things are not uh, so cut and dry as to be able to have a straight answer. You can't just simply say, yes, every game should have easy mode. Because maybe they shouldn't. Um, you also can't say that, no, no game should ever have an easy mode. Games should always be about the challenge. Because why? Why should they? What if the game is a, an interactive novel? And the main point of the game is to have a story-driven experience where you have control over the direction of the story. At which point, why does it need to be difficult? Why can't someone who just enjoys narratives play this game and make some decisions and see how the story pans out. This is the problem, is that video games are not one medium. They're many different mediums. It's, it's like saying, should television be live? Well, yes and no. A live TV makes perfect sense if it's a sports event. Uh, then, yeah, make it live. It's better live. You get to experience it all at the same time with the same people, uh, all, um, all waiting to see how the score goes, all enjoying the tension, and the chances of you finding out the score beforehand is zero because it hasn't happened yet. So, live sports, perfect. But live Hollywood films, that would be damn near impossible. Um, how on earth would you be able to record something live if you need to then add in special effects and different camera shots, it's impossible to do so. So, you can't have that question apply to all televised media. In the same way, you can't have the question, should games have an easy mode, be applied to all interactive media, which is what video games are. Video games are interactive media, and there's loads of different kinds of them. That's the genres of gameplay are not genres, they are different mediums, in the same way that, as I said before, sports, stand-up comedy, documentaries uh, and feature films are all different, uh, different forms of televised programming. They're not different genres of TV, they're different mediums in and of themselves. Different genres would be things like horror, comedy, action. Those are genres. And those still exist in video games. You can have, you have something like Bloodborne, for example, to go back to these Dark Souls inspired um, action games, something like Bloodborne would be a horror, but it's also a an action, vaguely RPG um, game that, that doesn't really have a genre name. Like people have been calling them Soulsborne. Um, I kind of like um, I, I kind of like precision action as a name for the genre. I think that's a good description on what you're trying to do because you have to be precise and it's focused on the action. So you could claim that Bloodborne is a horror. Uh, you could claim that The Surge and The Surge 2, despite being the same style of game, are sci-fi. The gameplay is the same, but the tone, the setting, the world building is different. And that's all you really need. Like, 
Um, Dark Souls itself, that's a dark fantasy. It's um, it's that kind of it, it's that kind of distinction. Like genres do exist. It's just they're never discussed uh, because whenever someone says genre in video games, what they mean is gameplay style, and gameplay style is completely different. Now, in something like the Souls-inspired games, I think the difficulty is a key component of the game. The whole purpose of the game is overcoming the game. Uh, the storyline is frankly non-existent in half of them. Um, the Dark Souls story, for example, basically doesn't exist. Um, the story can be summarised as follows for Dark Souls. Uh, you are dead, even though you're not. Like, From Software doesn't know what the word dead means, because they seem to think it means my skin is a vaguely different colour and I have a slightly lower constitution. But that's what they think dead means. You can still walk around, you can still you know, do whatever you do whilst alive. Being dead doesn't stop you doing that. You can still have a conversation, you can still wield a sword, uh, you can still be just as acrobatic and capable as you were. Basically, death isn't the handicap it used to be in the olden days. It doesn't screw your career up the way it used to. <sighs> 10 points to anyone who got that reference. Um, but yeah. So you're dead. Apparently, even though you're not dead, you, you have you have some kind of condition which makes you dead, whatever that means in this world. But you're not dead, because you can die in the game, and that makes you dead. Um, so, you are this thing that is apparently not considered alive by this culture. Um, whatever that means. You, you are in a prison cell, you leave... You find some some prick with an annoying voice sitting by a fire who tells you there are actually two bells of awakening. Brilliant, right? No, no, it's not fucking brilliant. But he actually says there's, there's two bells. If you ring them, something happens. Oh, fucking brilliant there. Yeah, yeah that, that's brilliant story time. Ring the bell, something happens. That's not motivation, that's cryptic bullshit. So, yeah, you reach you reach a fireplace, um, some some lisping prick tells you to go and ring some bells. Um, you, uh, you go and ring some bells, and then you show up at this flame and decide whether or not to extinguish it or not, and no real consequences are actually spelled out to you properly. It's not clear what anything means. Um, there's boss fights that have no sense to them. Um, Dark Souls doesn't have a storyline. It has impenetrable lore that only makes sense if you spend three hours on Vati Vidya's uh, YouTube channel. And um, that should not be a requirement for a video game story. Um, Dark Souls was basically put together in such a way that the story was written a half three on a Friday evening just before a long weekend with a bank holiday Monday. They didn't give a shit, so you shouldn't either. Now, I still think that they should have put at least a framework of a fucking story in place in Dark Souls. Like, the story is so shit that it it's barely even worth referencing. But they should have had at least something. I can't say what exactly, but an attempt would have been nice. But we're not there for the story, not really. And let's face it, it's not an RPG. Like they can claim it's an RPG all they like, it's really not. Like it's action, it's action. There are RPG elements, but there's RPG elements in everything. There's RPG elements in FIFA, for fuck's sake. Um, so let's let's call it what it is. It's an action game. And in an action game, what you're there for is the action. You're there to experience the cool action. And in order to experience that cool action, there needs to be a challenge component. Because let's face it, if you're moving around in that game, and you're swinging your sword, and you just cut everything down, nothing really poses a threat, that's fun for five minutes. It's not much fun after that. 
Because really the only way action remains fun when it's interactive is if there's resistance to that action. It requires some level of skill and mastery to attain. So, difficulty is a representation of how hard it is for you to master this. Now, it doesn't need to be bone-crushingly hard. Like, difficulty is, is a bad term, because really what we want is challenge. And challenge is different per person. A game designed for children will be pathetically easy for any, any experienced gamer or anyone over a set age. <coughs> Sorry, I just kicked the camera. Um, so, what we really need is we need to establish who the game is for and then make it suitably difficult for them. So, a game like Dark Souls or Mortal Shell or Bloodborne or The Surge 2 or any of these games that boast being difficult, they are designed for dedicated hardcore gamers who want to have a very skill-intensive action experience where all the movements are deliberate and everything falls into place. Now, that's, that's fine. That, those games do that well. Some of them do it better than others. Um, I would argue there are massive problems with Dark Souls gameplay. Um, I have criticised this many, many times. I think that Dark Souls as a game is um, a potential masterpiece that wasn't uh, given enough time to cook which means what ended up coming out is a steaming turd, but there's enough gems within it that you can see what they were trying to do. Um, the story is a great example of that. The fact the story is so ham-fisted is an example of just how crap um, part of this game is. Uh, just how, how awful part of these uh, this game came out. Uh, but other aspects, like obviously the story doesn't matter too much, but if they'd had enough time, the story would have been a decent enough framework that the game would fit together. A good example of that would be Neo. Neo has a perfectly fine story. It's nothing special, but it, it gives everything you do in context and it explains why you're there. There's no reason that you need that story, but without it you have no motivation, you have no reason to continue. Um, and everything just feels like it's just stuff that you're doing for doing its sake. And that ruins the motivation. So Dark Souls fucked that up. But it also fucked up some gameplay aspects. Um, enemies can walk through each other, so you can't bottlenose them properly. Um, if you've got enemies walking on a bridge, they'll pass straight through each other. Uh, they can swing their weapons through the guy in front of them and then hit you. So if there's two enemies standing one behind the other, this one here can swing their weapon through their friend and into you. However, if there is a post here, their weapons will pass straight through that post, yours will bounce off it. So you can't hit them. Um, it's silly things like that. If there's an archer further back, that archer can shoot straight through all of its friends and hit you. And they can see you through their own friends. Uh, the worst part about this is uh, because their weapons don't impact the walls or posts or anything like that, um, and they can basically see you through walls, uh, if you are standing in a corridor, and there's a room here, there's an enemy in the room, and you walk past the doorway, the enemy sees you and goes to run at you, and then you back away, thinking it's going to come out of the door and you can attack it. It won't. It'll run to the wall and stab you through the wall. You can't stab it through the wall, but it will do that to you. And yes, I can prove that this happens. I have footage of this happening in gameplay. Um, this is examples of just how badly put together Dark Souls really was. Um, it was unfair, and for a game where the fan base says um, that you know, every time you die it's your fault and it's always fair, um, no it's fucking not, bitch. It's really not. It is unfair and cheap. Constantly unfair and cheap. Um, and it's not always unfair and cheap uh, against the player. If you play as a ranged spellcaster, it's unfair and cheap towards the bad guys. You can stand at range and just fire off spells and destroy everything from a distance as skeletons and various other things just stand there taking spells and 
uh, just stand there with a sword not knowing what the fuck to do. Because they don't have an AI capable of understanding what the fuck's happening. So just stand there and die. Um, yeah, Dark Souls is, is half-baked. But it's half-baked brilliance. Which is why it inspired so many games. And the reason that it's half-baked brilliance is that it was designed to be a challenge. A pointed, purposeful challenge. It was designed so it didn't hold your hand, it didn't care how, um, how inexperienced you were, it was going to throw you in at the deep end and it was going to make you learn. And all the games like this uh, have done the same thing. Bloodborne does the same thing. It throws you at the deep end and it expects you to die. In fact, it throws you in with no weapon and no means of defending yourself with the full intention that you will die to the first enemy that you see. So much so that if you actually beat the first werewolf uh, and make it outside, um, the game kind of falls apart a bit because you have no real means of carrying on. Like, you can, you can get to... Uh, you can get to a lamp and make it back to the Hunter's Dream, but it kind of falls apart, because the whole point is, you're supposed to go to the Hunter's Dream because you died. It's actually supposed to be a narrative element, and what they really wanted to do is have a, um, is have a system where you have to die. Like, a, a, a fight that is a, a purposeful, you always lose fight at the beginning. But they didn't actually make it so that you definitely lose that. You can beat it. You can just run straight past it. Um, and that kind of ruins the narrative for Bloodborne. Um, but yeah, the point is that these games are designed to challenge you. They're designed to be games where you die a lot. They're designed to be games where you go back and repeat areas until you've mastered them. Um, and they're designed to be games where your reflexes and your nerve are tested. If you have poor reflexes, you won't be able to do the combat. If you have poor nerve, you're not going to be able to keep calm, and you're going to panic when enemies show up. So even if your reflexes are good enough, the enemies are going to show up, you're going to panic, they're going to kill you before you get a chance to settle down. You need to have a, a solid, um, calm, uh, calm nerve, you need to have good reaction times, you need to have a solid initiative. You need to know what you're doing, you need to plan ahead. And if you can do that, you can get through a lot of these games really easily. In fact, there are many, many people who can show how easy it is to get through things like Bloodborne, Dark Souls, etc. without taking any damage for large sections of the game. Because the combat is actually quite simple. Um, the combat is generally only three or four different options. Uh, a dodge move. Um, the dodge move is magic, so you can dodge through enemies. You can dodge through enemy weapons. Like uh, if someone's swinging a huge sword at you, dodging means moving out of its way. Not in Dark Souls, it doesn't. In Dark Souls, it means just roll at the sword. The sword will pass through you like you're not there. Now, I would have less issue with this if the dodge move made you turn to mist and like. You, you moved as a cloud of mist and then recoalesced on the other side. That at least would be fitting with the, uh, uh, with the, the way it's being used. But no, no, it's basically um, a glitch. Um, and the game's built around it, sadly. Uh, rather than having to actually build levels around fighting these enemies properly, learning their patterns, moving out of the way of their uh, attacks, and then moving in to attack them, uh, instead, the AI isn't built with that in mind. The level designs are too crowded and too cramped for that. And the moves are too stiff for you to be able to successfully move out of the way of weapons. You have to glitch your way through the game. And it's, it's a glitch that was left in and intentionally built around. And that is, you clip through the enemy. Your avatar clips through the enemy avatar. Um, when the enemy swings its weapon, you do the dodge move. And as you're doing the dodge move, your animation will pass through the enemy animation. Um, their weapon will pass straight through you and you will pass straight through their weapon. No one will take any damage and then you can stand up on the other side and attack away. That's not dodging. That's that's cheating. Um, sadly, you're, you have to cheat in these games if you want to play it that way unless you're going to stand back and fire spells or things because the game was built around using iframes, invulnerability frames. 
um, which is a terrible, terrible way of making a dodge move because it's not a dodge. Um, it's a press press the invulnerability button in the right window. Um, but there's not, not a dodging aspect to it. It doesn't actually matter which way you move. It doesn't matter if you get out of the way of the attack. Just It just matters if you're rolling when the attack happens. Um, which is kind of shit, really, when you think about it. It, it shows a lack of, um, of thought about the whole process. It shows how little they cared to make the game actually sensible. Actually um, match what the aesthetic was supposed to be. A little more thought, and they could have redesigned enemies and levels to actually make it so you had to move out of the way of weapons. They could have added a move that enabled you to charge in and take a swing and then dodge back and things like that. They could have added uh, more more directions to the dodge um, and different dodge distances so that you could actually get out of the way of weapons. And it would also have meant that enemies would have to close and then move back. And the same could be done with the enemies. The enemies could dodge you. This has been done more and more in later games. If you look at the way, uh, if you look at the way Bloodborne works... Bloodborne has less of an issue with this because it's a much faster game. But they, you still have uh, characters clipping through each other. Enemies still pass through each other. It's still got the same main, main problem. Um, and it's, it's an issue that, um, that only works if it's consistent. Like If your avatar clips through the enemy and the enemy clips through you, and everything clips through itself, so it, it doesn't really matter, like, two different people can occupy the same spot at the same time. Um, if you can just run straight through enemy uh, enemy models, fine, and the enemies can run through theirs, it means you can't bottleneck, but at least it's consistent. If the enemy weapons are going to pass through the walls, yours should be able to as well, it's consistent. Um, at that point, the challenge becomes fair, but the, the point that I'm getting at, because I've been sidetracked by this, the point I'm getting at is that once you understand the limits, you know the challenge. And if you understand the limits, while well, they're not fair limits by any means in, uh, in Soulsborne games, um, and I will defend that point, it is a very flawed game because of this problem. Um, whilst those limits aren't fair, they are defined. And once you know them, you can play around them. Which is why Souls games have a big fan base because once you understand what you can and can't get away with in the game what the limits of the enemies are you can play to your strengths and you can you can fight the enemies in a way that benefits you uh, you can learn how to use your dodge maneuvers you can learn how to use the environment around you in order to kill things quite comfortably so it works well and the challenge is still fitting even if there are issues with the way it was designed that make it feel like a flawed uh, system. But what if we added an easy mode? Well now we've undermined the game. Now there isn't the incentive to continue. Remember the story is non-existent. Story basically doesn't exist. Dark Souls' story is, is ramblings of a madman um, that doesn't make any sense, ringing bells and something about undead that doesn't fucking matter. Bloodborne's story is Go out and hunt, Hunter. Why? Because we fucking said so. Go and do it. That's the story. That's the whole fucking story. Right. There are NPCs. And by NPCs, what I mean is text boxes when you approach windows with no indication or animations on them whatsoever. Like, there's a lantern outside the windows that's a different colour, but there are no animations. Uh, there is no indication there's actually a person. There's no model for the person. It's just a fucking window. That's not an NPC. That's a text adventure. Like, that is the the epitome of lazy when it comes to story. But even even still, there are NPCs, there are little like story threads, but nothing that would you would call a proper storyline. Um, so there's no reason why you would want to get through it unless you were there for the challenge. If you're going to play these games, you're playing them to overcome the game. You're playing it to become a master at it. That's the purpose, that's the reason you switched it on. So if we make it artificially easier, we're undermining the whole point of playing the game. It would be like it would be like playing a game of chess against the opponents and we take away their queen. That's not fair, and it's not gonna matter. Um, you can play that game and you can win, but you're not gonna feel any real satisfaction because well, they had a massive disadvantage. 
And if you lose, you're going to feel wretched. Because they had a huge disadvantage and I still couldn't beat it. How shit am I? It doesn't feel satisfying for anyone involved. Um, the same is true the other way around. Um, if you have your queen taken away, um, you're going to play this game and you're going to feel constantly, um, constantly at a disadvantage the entire way through. And... It's not going to feel like you have a real chance of winning. Like you've you've had such a you've had such a big blow right from the beginning that what's the real point in playing? Like in, in a game of chess, it is very common that as soon as the queen is lost on either side, that person resigns. Like that person just king king over. Yeah, I'm done. Queen lost. Game over. Like I've seen it. I play a lot of chess online. And the amount of people who will immediately resign if they lose their queen, I'd say it's about one in three players. Um, so yeah, like that kind of difference, it's not fair. And people know that it's not fair. Um, so in a video game, it's the same thing, only now you're against an AI. And there's no sense of, there's no sense of fair play, there's no sense of, of um, handicap or anything like that. There is just the game and the purpose of the game, which is a feel, of, a feeling of satisfactory, a, 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 a feeling that you have you have done something that is difficult. That 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 satisfactory feeling you get when you've overcome a challenge. That's all that's there. So you undermine that, and it's ruined. There is an exception to this, though, and that is accessibility. So, if we're saying that an easy mode ruins the game, it undermines the whole point of the game, what, how do we do accessibility? Well, what I would say is a game should have accessibility modes that are purposely designed around accommodating people who have personal disabilities. So, for example, a colorblindness mode, um, so that if an enemy... Uh, in the game flashes red in order to indicate that they're about to do a manoeuvre, um, that, that's an unfair disadvantage to someone who's born colorblind. There's no way they're going to be able to tell that flash from any other flash. So they're going to need some other indicator. So you put that in. Because now they're on a level, a level pegging with someone who can see colours. Same with, same with someone who has uh, some other kind of, of disability. Um, for example, if you have a game that's based around mastery and reflexes, but you require repetitive pressing of a button, someone who has a musculature issue or a connective tissue disorder, such as myself, they can do timing and button combinations quite well, and we can do generally some some fast combinations fairly well, but rapid pressing of a button requires movements that are very, very painful and very, very taxing on the joints. I can, I can do a lot of different uh, complicated maneuvers in a lot of different games. Like I can play Hollow Knight to the point where I've beaten the Pantheons, but I can't tap the X button fast enough to beat the uh the the um what's the what's the word the um something events uh i can't remember the term for it now uh the when it comes flashing up on your screen you have to uh, press a button or tap a button um i can't do those in the spider-man game on ps4 i just can't do them i can't tap the x button fast enough so, um, how do we accomplish, um, how, how do we make games to, accom uh, to accommodate for that? Well, rapidly pressing a button isn't really a skill. Um, the skill is being able to react to the things that are appearing on screen. So instead, you have an accessibility option where you can change rapid press to press and hold, which a lot of games have nowadays. And I immediately switch that on in every game that has it. Because if I don't, I will not be able to do it. I will fail every time. Um, another example of a thing I can't do is because of the uh, connective tissue issues that I have in my wrists. 
I shake as I'm playing, a con uh, as I'm holding the controller. My my hands will not stay steady, so I'll be shaking the controller. Not, not like this, like I'm exaggerating it. But there is a game where you have to hold the controller perfectly still, and it represents staying still and holding your breath. It is the game until dawn. I physically cannot do it. I'm not capable of doing it. My wrists are too weak. I cannot hold a controller and stay still. I'm not capable. I have failed every single one. The only way I was able to play that game and get past those was to play it with a table directly in front of me and as soon as that happened, immediately put the controller down and stop touching it. And I had to do it within the first half second. If I could get the, the, the controller on the table and, stop to and not touch the table, it's now staying perfectly still, so it would register that as staying still. That's the only way I could get past it, though. Now, there are different issues that people have. Games shouldn't rely too much on audio, because if you rely too much on audio hints and audio clues, deaf players aren't going to be able to play through that. Or, if you're going to do that, have an option where you can change audio clues to visual clues. So maybe, instead of an audio clue, you have it so that there is a flash of colour or a flash of uh, of light at different points at the top of the screen that would indicate audio hints. Um, something that would be a little unnatural for most people, but for a deaf player to have the option to have, say, a bar at the top of the screen and like maybe a, a gradient of, uh, of like a smoke effect would come down at different points to indicate different sound effects. Like, if there's like a constant clanging, maybe here there would be like a pulsing um, like cloud in the top of the screen that just pulses faintly. Um, and then as you move away, it pulses a little bit and then it fades to nothing to indicate that there is a noise there. And if you made it so it was a little strip at the top with different pulsing um, colours or, or gradients, um, you could effectively make a game that would be completely sound free and a deaf person could play it with all the same um with all the same information um now would it be a f would it be possible that someone who doesn't have these disabilities could go into the options they could switch on this deaf mode they could switch on the mode for people who can't do rep repetitive button presses and they would now have an advantage maybe um, is that the same as an easy mode? I don't think so. Um, I don't think that would be enough of a difference in the gameplay for it to count as an easy mode. Um, but even still, I think that those things are reasonable in order to make a game accessible for as many people as possible without undermining the game. Um, I think another great way of making games accessible is making sure that you can make it so that they run on any controller. Have as many compatibility modes as you can. Try to make it so it can be remapped and changed to different controllers. There are people out there who have played uh, video games with their feet. Uh, there's one guy who uh, who only has what like he he's got uh, some kind of deformity. He's got one arm that's kind of like this, and he, he can't really move it. And the other arm he just doesn't have. It. He's got like a stump, and he plays um, games with a controller pressed into his chest and this arm which he presumably only has limited movements he has has like a wand in this arm and he has something on his chin uh, with a stick that's connected to an, another stick and he presses buttons with this wand and he moves his chin with this and that's enough that he can play video games it's fucking amazing to watch I, I wish I could remember who he was and actually find his videos on YouTube because it is incredible to watch. And he can beat games. like He's good at them. Um, he's limited in what he can play because he can only press a few buttons at a time. But it is fantastic watching someone overcome their disabilities. And there are loads of disabled people who play video games with no um, additional modes, no accessibility modes required. They have learned to overcome their disability and they play the games for the same reason. And all they see it all they see is, well, I have this difference in my body. I've accounted for it in my own way. And they now try and get past the same challenge. And how amazing does it feel to them 
when they do overcome it. You can hardly argue with these people when a huge number of them play the games and get a lot of value out of them. So I don't think easy modes are required. Um, I don't think that we need to dumb down a game difficulty because the whole point of those games is the challenge. But I do think that it should be entirely uh, up to the game designer. I think that when a game is being made, the designer needs to decide what the purpose of their game is. Are they making a game that is designed around a challenge? Are they making a game that is supposed to be about mastery? In that case, they don't need an easy mode, unless they want an easy mode. Maybe the point of the easy mode in their game is, this is an easy version of my game, play through this to learn the patterns, learn the attacks, learn the, the strategies you need, and play through it on this mode, and then when you get better, upgrade it to a higher difficulty, or a higher difficulty again. You could have ranges of difficulties if you design your game with them in mind. And maybe the challenge is, well, I've beaten it on difficulty one, but difficulty three, that's, that's my next challenge, that's my next aim. And then you can play it through at different levels. And maybe someone will design a Souls-style game with difficulty levels in mind, and the aim of the game will be to beat it on the highest difficulty level. And each difficulty will be its own challenge, and that would be fine. But you have to plan for it, otherwise it undermines it. If you have a game and you just switch it to easy mode and everything remains the same, and all that changes is the dodging, it has a, a bigger window for it to work, the enemies have less health, you do more damage, the ending remains exactly the same, everything's exactly the same. Then it undermines it, especially if you then have trophies and achievements, and they hand them out for the easy difficulty, because then what you're saying is there isn't any real incentive to play it on the harder difficulties, because... It's not as if when you get to that end point, you feel validated. Because someone else is getting to that end point way, way easier and getting exactly the same recognition. Now, we could claim, well, you could just play the hard mode yourself for your own enjoyment, for your own amusement. And yes, some people can. But games like this, challenges like this, are social. There's a reason the fan community around Dark Souls is so huge. It's because challenging games are challenging in a social way as well. It's not just about beating something that's hard. Because if that was the case, we could just sit back and invent our own little, um, little bits of engagement. We could just stick a cup on a shelf and try and throw uh, a ping pong ball in it from a distance. That's going to be hard. Uh, if you get if you got a, a really really light ping pong ball, a very small cup, a really far far distance, well that's a really really uh, difficult challenge. Uh, make it even harder. You've got to bounce it off two walls before it goes in the cup. So now you've got to throw it. You've got to bounce off a wall, bounce off another wall, and get land in the cup. Really really hard to do. Really challenging. You'd have to practice for a very very long time to get perfect to get like, get it in that cup. But what's the fucking point? No one cares. The reason these games matter. It's because they have a social aspect. Because without a story, and without uh, character-driven elements, without uh, anything that ties it all together and gives your character a motivation, the motivation instead becomes recognition from the community. Other players recognising that you beat the hard game, and the status that comes with that. And yes, status does come with it. Gamers are social creatures. We like to discuss on YouTube, on Discord, on Reddit, on various different forums across the internet. We like to talk to each other. We go to game, game clubs and game societies. There are loads of different gaming groups. Uh, there's multiplayer games. The reason that, we, that a lot of us play is that that mastery gets recognised by others. And for that mastery to be recognised by others, there needs to be a level that you have to reach. There needs to be a a method of proving that you've done what you've done. Uh, that's why achievements and trophies are so popular amongst these uh, these kinds of people, because if you have the trophy, you definitely did it. 
You've done it. There's proof that you did it. You unlocked the trophy. So you have succeeded. That's, that's a great way of communicating what the challenge means to people. Now, if getting that trophy can be done on the easiest difficulty, there's no real proof that you've actually beaten the game. You're not really part of the upper echelon. And it's not, it's not a matter of whether or not you've reached it yet. The people who have just started, who are you know, struggling on the first boss and are getting killed, so long as they're trying and they're in the community and they're saying, oh yeah, I'm, I'm you know, playing my way through, uh, uh, through Dark Souls, but I keep getting killed by the Taurus demon, I haven't been able to get past them. I guarantee that person, if they're honest, that they can't get past the Taurus demon, they're trying and they're going to keep going and you know, they're not going to give up and all that, they'll get cheered on by the community. Even the Dark Souls community, which has a massive, massive toxic element, will still have enough people in it that will cheer on people who are new to the game. They will give hints, they'll make guides, there'll be loads of strategies, there'll be endless videos on how to kill the boss. Uh, there'll be loads of different walkthroughs on where to go and what build to use, what weapon is best. Right? I guarantee it doesn't even matter, like the Taurus Demon is one of the first bosses you'll face, so it's unlikely to be the one that will actually stop you, but any of them, any of them, there will be a guide, there'll be something that shows you, there'll be beginner's hints and tips. Because the community wants you to rise to the challenge. They don't want to be the only one to succeed. They want everyone to succeed. But they want everyone to succeed at the same level. It's meritocratic. That's why difficulty matters in games. And that's why I think that, for the most part, in the games that always cause this debate to happen, no, there shouldn't be an easy mode. Unless the game is purposely designed for it, and the developer wants to put it in there because of the way they want the game to be played. For the most part, these games are designed with a very, very specific singular vision, and that would be ruined by an easy mode. So, no, I don't think there should be. And I think all the people complaining, to use a phrase from that somewhat toxic community, they need to get good. See you next time. Bye.